Willow is Google's newest and most powerful superconducting quantum computing chip, and the next step in our path towards building large-scale quantum computers and exploring their applications. It began with an announcement that seemed almost beyond belief. Google unveiled a computer that solved a specific problem in just five minutes. A problem that, if handed to the world's best supercomputers, would have taken them 10 septillion years to complete. That's a one, followed by 24 zeros. To put that into perspective, the entire age of the universe is estimated at just 13.8 billion years. In other words, this new computer accomplished something so extreme that it seems cosmically impossible. And Google is not standing alone on this frontier. Microsoft and Amazon are racing into the same quantum computing landscape, each taking bold but wildly different approaches. For decades, quantum computing has been described as the future, always just out of reach, always over the horizon. But now, suddenly, it feels as though it has arrived all at once. The obvious question emerges, what has changed? And why should anyone care about machines that must operate in conditions colder than outer space simply to function? Quantum computing, often abbreviated as QC, has earned a reputation for being as complicated as it is promising. Some joke that QC really stands for quite complicated, but stripped to its basics, the difference from classical computing is straightforward. Traditional computers use binary bits, zeros, and ones to process information. Quantum computers use qubits, quantum bits, which can exist in multiple states at the same time, thanks to quantum properties such as superposition and entanglement. This unlocks the ability to process enormous amounts of data simultaneously, a feat that allows them to tackle problems even the fastest supercomputers could not solve in any reasonable amount of time. Imagine being able to evaluate every possible combination of a problem in parallel, rather than checking them one by one. That's the promise of quantum computing. If realized, it could revolutionize countless industries. Drug development, cryptography, climate modeling, logistics optimization, superconducting materials, and even the search for new, more efficient solar cells. But the dream comes with a very stubborn obstacle. Qubits are delicate. They collapse with even the slightest disturbance. A stray magnetic field, a change in temperature, or microscopic vibrations. The result is decoherence, where the quantum state degrades and errors flood the system. Current machines experience fault rates between 0.1% and 1%. That may not sound like much, but for comparison, the error rate needed for practical applications must be closer to 1 in 10 billion. In effect, the marriage proposal written carefully in the sand is constantly at risk of being washed away by the tide. So why the sudden flurry of progress? In late 2024 and early 2025, three of the biggest technology companies made announcements that reignited excitement worldwide. Google introduced Willow, its most advanced quantum processor to date. Microsoft unveiled Majorana One, a chip designed around exotic theoretical particles. And Amazon revealed Ocelot, a prototype aimed at cutting error correction costs by as much as 90%. Each of these projects tackles the same critical challenge, quantum error correction. Without effective error handlings, quantum machines remain too unreliable to be useful. Yet, fascinatingly, each company has chosen a radically different strategy. Microsoft's Majorana One builds on the concept of topological qubits. These qubits, if they can be realized, promise remarkable stability by encoding information in a way that resists external disturbances. They are named after Majorana particles, elusive entities first proposed by physicist Ettore Majorana in the 1930s. In theory, they act as safes that protect quantum information from interference. The difficulty lies in retrieving that information. It is as though someone created the world's best vault, so secure that not even the owner can always get inside. More troubling is the possibility that these particles may not truly exist in a practical, observable sense. Microsoft has been criticized before for prematurely announcing evidence of Majoranas, only to retract the claim due to insufficient scientific rigor. Physicists like John Preskill and Jonathan Oppenheim have openly questioned whether the company has proven its case, 
Even so, the potential payoff is enormous. If Majorana particles can be harnessed, Microsoft's vision involves strings of millions of ultra-stable qubits, controlled with simple voltage pulses, paving the way to large-scale industrial quantum systems. Amazon's Ocelot represents a different philosophy, efficiency. Rather than betting on unproven physics, Amazon combines transmons, a well-understood superconducting qubit design, with cat qubits inspired by Schrodinger's famous thought experiment. These cat qubits exist in two highly distinct states simultaneously, like a cat that is both alive and dead until observed. Because the states are so far apart, errors have a harder time flipping between them. The Ocelot prototype employs four transmons for stability and five cat qubits for data storage. This hybrid design drastically reduces the overhead usually required for error correction. Amazon estimates that its approach can cut correction costs by up to 90%. That means fewer qubits are needed to represent the same logical information, saving both space and energy. Head of Amazon's quantum hardware, Oscar Painter, has even suggested that a fully-fledged machine could require just a fraction of the resources that other systems demand. The catch? Ocelot remains a proof of concept, with limited computational power so far. Scaling it up will be the true test. Google's Willow embraces brute force. With 105 superconducting qubits arranged in a lattice called a surface code, Willow seeks to overwhelm errors by sheer scale. In theory, larger lattices tolerate more errors, but in practice, adding qubits usually introduces more mistakes than it fixes. Willow changed that. For the first time, researchers observed an exponential reduction in error rates as the system grew larger. This long-pursued below-threshold performance had eluded scientists since 1995, when the idea of error correction was first proposed. The payoff was dramatic. Willow managed to complete a benchmark calculation in under five minutes that would take classical supercomputers 10 septillion years. It is the clearest demonstration yet of quantum advantage, proof that these machines can surpass traditional computers, at least in specific scenarios. But the demonstration was still a carefully chosen benchmark, not a commercially relevant application. Willow, like other quantum devices, remains tied to ultra-low operating temperatures and specialized laboratory conditions. Despite the differences, all three strategies highlight the same truth. Quantum error correction is the defining challenge of this field. Without it, even the most powerful chip cannot produce reliable results. And beyond hardware, another problem looms – software. Algorithms, compilers, and error correction codes still lead. Quantum hardware may be racing ahead, but without the right tools to interpret results, the value remains limited. So when will quantum computing become practical? According to NASA's Technological Readiness Level Scale, most current systems sit around Level 3 or 4, where proof-of-concepts exist in labs but are far from market-ready. A 2023 survey of 500 experts found that 75% believe we may reach Levels 8 or 9, the point of near-commercial deployment by 2032. That's promising, but not guaranteed. Even if achieved, it doesn't necessarily mean widespread adoption, just that machines could begin making an impact in specialized fields. The diversity of approaches being pursued by Google, Microsoft, and Amazon may be the real advantage. By attacking the problem from multiple angles, brute force scaling, exotic particle stability, and efficiency through clever architectures, the chances increase that at least one will break through. But the road ahead also depends on training programmers, developing applications, and identifying killer use cases that justify the immense cost and complexity. So where does this leave us? Quantum computing has shifted from pure theory into tangible, if fragile, reality. The headlines may oversell the immediacy, but the breakthroughs are genuine. The question is whether these machines are on the verge of ushering in a new computing era, or whether they remain scientific marvels searching for a practical purpose. The race among Google, Microsoft, and Amazon is not just about building faster chips, it's about redefining the very foundations of computation. 
If successful, quantum computers could solve problems that today seem impossible, unlocking new medicines, materials, and technologies that could reshape society. But the timeline remains uncertain. Will it be five years, 15, or longer? The only certainty is that the stakes are enormous, and the journey has only just begun. The question now turns outward. What do you think? Will we see meaningful quantum applications in our lifetimes? Or are we still chasing a dream that remains forever just out of reach? Stay curious, keep questioning, and join the discussion. Because the future of computation may very well depend on the answers.